I am Amy Twido, and I am the Informal Learning Program Manager at the Seattle Public Library. I want to welcome each and every one of you on this special evening featuring some of Seattle's brilliant young people. I am so honored to work with Mr. Delbert Richardson and Ms. Noni Irvin on this extraordinary project, and I want to recognize the incredible work they have done with our youth. I also want to take a moment to recognize that we are living on indigenous lands, the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Duwamish. Thank you to the Seattle Public Library Foundation for their generous support of this program, and I thank all of you for attending our event tonight. I know you will enjoy it, and you'll learn something new from these young scholars. Thank you. Amazing. So that was from Amy, one of our partner at SPL. Um, thank you. So we are knowledge with space. We are knowledge what we're here for. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. D, uh, as we call him, uh, Mr. Delbert Richardson, uh, founder and curator of the museum. So Mr. D is a community scholar, ethno museum lodgist, and second generation storyteller of a national award-winning American history tra uh, traveling museum, Run Spoken Truths. With a use of authentic artifacts, storyboards, and the ancient art of storytelling, Mr. D teaches American history through an Afrocentric lens. His work is broken into four sections. Mother Africa, which focuses on the many contributions by Africans in the area of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. Second section of the museum is American chattel slavery, the brutal, brutal treatment and psychological impacts on African Americans in the diaspora. The third section of the museum is the Jim Crow era, the racial caste system that focuses on recreation and enforcement of legalized segregation. And finally, still we rise, which focuses on the many contributions in the Americas Black inventor slash inventions. Mr. D's work is primarily geared towards K to 12 grade students, as well as professional development training for primarily white female teachers that make over 79% of a national teaching force, as well as DEI, which is diversity, equity, inclusion training, is also a mis part of Mr. D's portfolio. So let's welcome Mr. D. Great job, Ms. Christelle. You did an amazing job. Yes, my name is Delbert Richardson and the junior storytellers and other young adults call me Mr. D. I want to thank you all. I want to welcome you all. Sister Angela, Brother Jonathan, I saw you for a brief moment. Thank you for coming. Um, you know, I want to make sure I do my best to try to keep this short because I don't want to um, distract from this work. But I just want you all to know that these young storytellers represent a report card to me. It's really uh, a representation of how when one person has a vision and a dream, mine, and then I also say, I wanna share that vision and dream with others, the junior storytellers, the magic has and will occur. When you see these videos today, I want you to just think about, there was a journey of getting to this place. There was some fear, some apprehension, some curiosity, and at the end, some excitement. But I can't go any farther without acknowledging my amazing team. Miss Noni Irvin, Miss Christelle, and Mr. Joel, because without them, this would not happen. So I want to say, say thank you so much, and I could not have done this without you. So I hope you're all ready. I hope you're prepared, and I can't wait to see the sun shine on these amazing young adults. Amazing. Thanks, Mr. Lee. So now, the moment we all came for, we're about to share some of the stories of our amazing junior storytellers. Um, and we are starting 
with Alexis, I believe. Um, so Miss Noni, and just so you guys know what the background was, we pre-recorded some of uh, the stories. So we'll be sharing the videos. And then after each of our presentations, if the junior storyteller is present with us tonight, they'll just come forward and Mr. D will engage with them after the video. So we'll be starting with Miss Alexis. My name's Alexis and I'm going into my 11th grade year. And the name of my poem is You Can't Break Us. Hmm. Mother Africa is the homeland of the strong, the resilient and the beautiful. They tried to take us and they did, but you can't take our pride. No, you won't. They took us, tried to hold us down, held us in chains, but you can't take our strength. No, you won't. We ran and ran, they tried to keep up. You thought your speed was as great as our hope. Our wildest dreams louder than your bells could ever be. You can't catch up, no you won't. They tried to separate us, make us feel less than. We were not less than, no we aren't. We were given less than because we are more than they could ever be. We were more resilient and we were more resistant no, you can't break us. No, you won't. We took our power back. We took our power and called it black. We took a look at our past and figured it wouldn't always last. So we took our pain and we used it as fuel to fuel our wonders and our wildest dreams. Where we start, we will never end because you can't break us. No, you won't. Oh, oh Alexa. <laughs> It was the pressure of going first. <laughs> okay. So let me share this before I ask Alexis a question. And because Alexis is a budding future soccer star, she's going to be leaving us at 630. So let me give some backstory to the audience. All the junior storytellers were taking were taken through an intensive behind the scenes journey of the museum storyboard by storyboard, story by story, and truth by truth. And then they were challenged, not asked, but challenged to choose which one of the four sections they wanted to tell their story. They were given the opportunity to use whatever method they wanted to tell. Sing, dance, poem, spoken word. So what you're hearing is what they chose as a method to speak from the inside out. Alexis, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Those words, no, 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 no. You try, but you can't break us, okay? So Miss Alexis, here's the question. What section of the museum did you choose to create your presentation? And why do you feel it's important for you to tell this in air quotes story? Um, so I focused my poem on um, Mother Africa, uh, Jim Crow and chattel slavery. Um, and I think it's important, well, my story was important to tell is because um, I think it's really important to focus on um, kind of mindset and that like you might be handed a bad hand and you, like you're gonna go through things like based on whatever and it's the mindset that's gonna carry you and my mindset and uh, my poem is that you can't break us, you won't break us. Um, and I think that's kind of how African Americans got through pretty much everything is that you will not break us and we will not let you break us. Thank you. So uh, full disclosure, Alexis is one of my village nieces. I remember her when she was running around, running around. So Alexis, because I'm claiming you as a village niece, do you envision that you can't break us being part of your DNA going forward in your journey of life? 
Um, yes, I do. And I think it should be part of everybody. Um, because I think just You Can't Break Us can be uh, uh, relatable for everyone and everything. Um, and I think mindset uh, at the end of the day will pretty much get you through anything. So you say everyone, even elders like me? Elders is a strong word. I think it'll uh, help everyone. So yes. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone give Alexa some love. Thank you, Alexa. That's great job. Yes. <sighs> okay. Thanks, Alexis. And great job. You did amazing. And we hope to see you next year. So see you next year. Um, so now we are going to see Miss Maya. My name is Maya Held. I'm an 11th grader and my piece is called Identity. Michelle Frost once said, within my soul, within my mind, there lies a place I cannot find. Home of my heart, land of my birth. As I sit here, I think of my home the one I long for, the place my heart should want to reside. But alas, it is still a foreign place inside. The clay-enriched earth, this sacred land of my birth, has never once felt like mine. No matter how much I try to hide, the fact that the land is foreign, the people who I know should feel like my own, render me on an island, alone and warm. Though we are still descendants of the same proud race and share a familiar face, I do not feel like we could share the same space. Yet I still find myself longing for Africa, the cradle of life, the motherland, my sacred, sacred soil, my birth's grand plan. I hope one day I'll be able to visit her and see, to read it, discover in her my identity. And in her vast stretch, perhaps I'll see my true home that I yearn for, tranquility. Oh my, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, so full disclosure, Maya is one of our returning junior storytellers. And audience, for me, for a young adult to come back a second year is powerful and amazing. So I wanted to ask the, the junior storytellers that are here for the second time, there's a couple of them, a little bit more deeper question. So Maya, thank you so much for speaking from the heart. You and I have talked about that whole thing about your ethnic identity and your, your connectedness or lack of connectedness. And so the question I want to ask you, and it's a two-parter, as a returning junior storyteller, why did you choose to return for a second junior tour, a second session? And on top of that, probably more importantly, what was the difference for you personally in creating your presentation this time? Um, the reason I decided to come back was because I just had a really good experience um, last year and it was something I'd never really done before. So I was a little bit skeptical going into it, but I ended up really enjoying it. And I felt like I was able to be in a space that just felt safe. And I felt like it was really valuable for me to kind of hear everybody else's stories. And then um, the story that I chose this year to tell, I tried to focus more on Mother Africa. And I wanted to get a little bit more like personal into my experience, just because last year, I think I did it about like black hair and it was it was good but I wanted to do something that was just a little bit more in depth and challenge myself to kind of dig deep more on my end thank you now audience Maya's really kind of minimizing her hair piece from last year right Miss Noni so if you want to hear her hair piece of last year I strongly suggest you listen to the recording on the SPL um, uh, website. So Maya, thank you so much. Um, I, I'm proud of you because not only have, do I see a maturity in you, I feel a mature, look at that face, look at that smile. I feel a maturity in you. And thank you for saying that, um, 
you came back because the first time I was a little bit skeptical. I wasn't sure, but you came back because you knew there was more to be told. So thank you. Thank you. Great job, Maya. And again, you can always come back next year. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> See you next year. Um, so we'll keep going. Uh, we are going to show Josiah's piece, who is not here, so but we'll still honor his work uh, and show his piece. My name is Josiah Wellens. I'm finished with high school. The name of my story is Unseen Heroes. What comes to mind when you hear about the American-Mexican War? This short essay aims to shed light about the history of the American-Mexican War and Black and slave people's role. The reason why I wanted to write about this is because some people do not know the role of Black slaves alongside the history of Texas and how it became a part of the United States. The American-Mexican War, which took place between 1846 to 1848, was a war between the United States and Mexico that stemmed from territory disputes over Texas, which had recently declared independence from Mexico and in 1845, Texas had been annexed by the US. The war not only resulted in pivotal territorial gains for America, but also called attention to the deep-rooted issue of slavery. Black slaves played a crucial role in this war. Many were forced to serve as laborers or soldiers for both sides. Slaves were subjected to harsh conditions and placed immense risks during the battle. It was not until 1848, until Mexico Mexico recognized Texas independence after a successful revolution against Mexican rule. However, tensions remained high between Texans and Mexicans because of cultural differences and over slavery, which Texas wanted to be a slave state and Mexico had already abolished slavery. In conclusion, the American-Mexican War revealed not only territorial disputes with a neighboring country, but within while also highlighting issues surrounding slavery. The reason why I wanted to write about the American-Mexican War was because the roles played by Black and slaves, people on both sides during those times and its history alongside Texas. So as I shared, Josiah is not here to receive, not to receive his flowers, but it's amazing. And I believe this was Josiah's third time this year, second time as well this year uh, joining us. Um, so yeah, that was Josiah's piece. So if I can share something, Josiah has graduated and he's probably at work, just so you know. <laughs> so we're going to honor him. But let me share something. When the question was asked um, of the junior storytellers, what story you want to tell? He said, I want to tell the story about the Texas-Mexican War. I, my eyes perked open, right? Because I teach American history. And so very few people know the story of Mexico and Texas. So if you look at the United States in terms of a country, you see where they're located. There was a lot of tension between Mexico and Texas. And one thing he shared that's so true they wanted to make Texas a slave state. And so I was really surprised and curious and empowered that his level of knowledge was already at a level that a lot of adults are not even aware of. So Josiah, when you look at this recording, I'm so grateful that you decided to come back. I'm proud of you. And I cannot wait to see how are you going to be changing the world? So everybody give Josiah some love while he's not here so he can see it on screen. Thank you, Josiah. Okay. We now are going to see Gabriella's piece. My name is Gabriella Benson, and I'm going into 10th grade. Uh, I hope you enjoy my piece. What is your earliest memory of becoming aware that some people look different from you? For me, it was when I was in first grade and I had a friend who was Korean. My friend told me that we could no longer be together at recess because 
Her older brother told her that she was not allowed to. I begged for her to tell me why, but she would not. Finally, after days of trying to convince her, her brother came up to me personally and told me that she could not play with me because I had brown skin and I came from Africa. Six-year-old me couldn't quite understand what was wrong with me having brown skin and being African, and I don't think that my friend really did either. I was always taught from my parents that Africa was a special and unique place. And this is something that I truly believed. Because even at my young age, I was exposed to the beauty of things that came from Africa, from the deep green Malachite figurines sculpted out to a perfect tiger, to the bright and colorful beaded necklaces and bracelets that my mother owned. From the bold and cara fabric that my mother would get my siblings and I to wear to events, to the dresses made out of silk, embedded in glistening hand-stitched pearls and beads that I would stare at in awe at weddings, and the upbeat and fun Nigerian music that my cousins and I would have dance-offs to. All of these things were my normal. Because I knew all of these things, I thought that other people would get to experience and celebrate these things. So when I heard indirectly for the first time that Africa was associated with bad things, this left me feeling confused. And although I knew that I was human, just like everyone else around me, this was when I came to the realization that I had a part of me that was different from other people. And these days, I like to replace that word different with unique. It wasn't until then that I became aware that other people thought there was something wrong with being African. And as I observe, I've noticed that most children don't realize that they belong to a certain race and the others is different from theirs until they start going to school. I remember volunteering once and a girl in kindergarten asked me, what is your Korean name? When I responded to her that I do not have a Korean name because I'm not Korean, I think the realization that she had a side of her that was different from others may have hit her as well at that moment. But the more I grew up, I started to just accept being seen differently in a negative light. But it wasn't until one day that I had enough and I asked myself, if segregation laws don't exist anymore, why are black people still treated unjustly? I wonder where this mindset came from. As most people knew about the enslavement of black people, the understanding kind of stops there. But after that was the beginning of the Jim Crow era. The Jim Crow era was basically just a new system of oppression for black people and other people of color. There were certain laws specifically created to degrade and mistreat black people. Just some of these laws made it illegal to partake in interracial marriages and sharing public facilities. To the extent that they would have separate bathrooms, schools, hospitals, restaurants, hotels, train stations, elevators, neighborhoods, and so much more. And there were even some that were so extreme that a black person would get punished for the simplest thing. You could not insinuate that a white person was lying. You could never demonstrate superior knowledge to a white person. You could never laugh at a white person. You couldn't even show affection to another black person in front of a white person. Keep in mind that these laws were legal and normalized. And the majority of black people just had to accept it for the longest time. And this really got me thinking, all of this happened just because we had a darker shade of skin. Prejudice is a burden that confuses the past, threatens the future, and renders the inaccessible. This quote by Maya Angelou describes that moment of my friend's brother insinuating negative conceptions about Africa and the people that come from there. After learning more about Jim Crow, my question got answered. 
I realized that a lot of people still discriminate black people because those segregation laws were such a big part of society's norm. And their way of thinking has just kept getting passed on to their children. I believe that it is normal for a kid to start to realize that they look and are different. But when that happens, it shouldn't happen in a negative way formed by prejudice stereotypes. Gab. Gabriella, Gabriella, Gabriella. Oh my goodness. So audience, Gabriella is a returning junior storyteller. Gabriella, please come back on screen. And so for the adults in the room primarily, I want you to just embrace Gabriella is um, from Africa, an immigrant. And just listen to her words and think about the intersections and the parallels of people that come from the continent that are called immigrants, but are socialized in a way here that creates dis-ease. Meaning, wait a minute, what's my Korean name? I'm not Korean, right? But just holding that tension, knowing they come from a place that African Americans are not even aware of. So Gabriella, this really speaks to why I start the museum with Mother Africa, because it's so important for me to help black and brown children specifically learn that Mother Africa starts with a positive place and that we were inventors, we were creators, we were architects, but that's not taught in schools. So I wanna thank you so much, Gabriella, for taking us on a personal journey. And for those that are in the audience, I want you to really just watch the vulnerability of these young people. And so I wanted to say this when uh, I think Maya talked about safe safety. One of the things that's so important for Mr. D is to create a safe place for these young adults to be vulnerable and transparent and to love who they are and what they stand for and not to apologize for that beauty. Gabriella, thank you so much, Gabriella. Ah, oh, boy, I got goosebumps. <laughs> now, Mr. D, did you actually ask Gabriella? No. Question? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you. And just in love, we might, you might have to only ask one question or we won't no, get you tonight. Thank you. Yes. Gabriella, are you there? There you are. Mm -hmm. So as a returning junior storyteller, why was, what was the difference for you personally in creating this story versus last year's story? Uh, well, last year, I also read about Jim Crow too, but um, this year I just wanted to uh, write more like personally and just really um, kind of explain, like go like into detail more and like um, kind of just say what I didn't get to say last year and try and put it into words and um, yeah, I mean, the experiences I've had like in my life was like, I guess, a big inspiration. So, thank you, and you've helped us all. So, thank you so much. Y'all give her some more love before we go on. Thank you, Gabriella. Great job, Gabriella. And I think you'll hear me say that to every single junior storyteller. We hope to see you next year. So again, it will be your third time. Uh, and there's always something new you can learn, um, even if you've already heard it. I believe now we have Ikron joining us for the piece. Hello, my name is Akron Upshur and I'm a year 12 student. And this is my story titled, If I Could Go Back. Mm -hmm. Most stories of a household that comes to America starts with a hope for a better life, better future, 
better academics, and safety. Just like those many stories of those households, my family story began like that. Traveling all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, my mother, who had a Somali traditional baby sling called Fade wrapped inside being me, whilst firmly holding my older brother's hand as she made the long 14-hour flight to the U.S., plus a layover to the hope of providing her kids that better life, better future, better academics, and safety, not only for her kids, but for herself and for the family. America being truly a whole new world in the eyes of someone who comes from somewhere foreign is pure innocence and ignorance to the long dark history of America, particularly the way that black and brown and indigenous people were treated. It's not their fault that the American dream seemed to go to every continent, every country, every city, and every town. It even seemed to reach the rural parts where it ignited that hope of reaching somewhere where they can excel, where their family can excel. Though the name calling and stereotypes of being poor, dirty, and uneducated associated with being African is a part of the many stories those families, like mine, faced. If I could go back to those moments, I would tell them how beautiful and strong the many countries that reside in Mother Africa are. If I could go back to those moments, I would tell them how many technological and mathematical achievements were founded in Africa. If I could go back to those moments, I would tell them the same people you call dirty and poor and uneducated may be the very things you use in your day-to-day -day life. Mother Africa is beauty, excellence, and intelligence, and of course a mark of a multicultural sensational hotspot. If I could go back, I would laugh in their faces for their ignorance. I would stand firmly and proudly for who I am and for everyone else that had to endure such shame and pain and embarrassment. America can be the place where we find that better life, better education, and safety, but that doesn't mean we throw away a big part of our identity to fit in. Just because we left our countries for the future our parents envisioned for us doesn't mean we are not proud of our lineage. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's right. You better tell them, okay? Thank you. So here again, audience, and you know, and I struggle with the word immigrant, just so you know, but for con context, I say it so you all know that they arrived here, right? They came here. We were brought here on ships. And so pure innocence and ignorance, right? Yes, if I can go back. So what I want you to think about, Akron, we're moving forward now, right? So we can tell them, we can tell the good news forward now. We can't go back, but as we talk about Sankofa, we can take that story and move forward with it, okay? So Akron, I'm gonna ask you a question. As a new junior storyteller, what section of the museum did you choose to create your presentation? And why do you feel it's important, and I think I kind of know this, to tell this story? Um, yes, so my section uh, of the museum was Jim Crow. Um, the reason why I chose it was because around that time, uh, a lot of stereotypes and negativity towards uh, people of color uh, seems to stem from that time era, um, especially when segregation happened to, you know, happened to happen, um, not only in uh, America, but places like South Africa, which I kind of take inspiration of. Um, and so my story is kind of like, I don't understand why we're associated with these stereotypes um, when we're so more than that, like, it's that non-standing part. Um, and it's just kind of like wanting to, in a way, liberate ourselves from these stereotypes um, because we are a lot more than that. So that's why. You're muted, Mr. D. So thank you. So. Akron makes it real clear why I start the museum with Mother Africa, even though I call it American history. It's imperative that we tell the stories that Akron is talking about, that she knows and that she lives. 
Thank you, Akra. Thank you. You did it. You did it. Great job. See, there was nothing to worry about. You did amazing. I and know. again, come back next year. Uh, uh, the next junior storyteller we have is Dakota. My name is Dakota Jeffcoat, and my poem is called Black Inventors That Help Make History. From the traffic light to the ironing board, Black inventors made their mark in history. Their inventions stand the rest of time with an impact that's still felt today. Garrett, Mor Garrett Morgan's stoplight revolutionized the streets, while Sarah Bone's ironing board made housework a breeze. And we can't forget about Granville Woods, whose inventions brought us the telegraph and railroads. These innovators overcame adversity and broke down barriers that were once thought unbreakable. They proved that intelligence and creativity knows no boundaries of race or color. Their inventions changed the course of history and opened doors for future generations. Black inventors are a testament to resilience and resourcefulness of the human spirit. So, truth be known, Dakota's one of my special ones because there is only two young men on the Zoom this year, and they're both returning from last year. How about that? So, Dakota, you know, I always like to really kind of just like go a little bit deeper with Dakota. Dakota, why'd you come back for a second year? Uh, well, because I don't know, because I liked the camp last year, and I thought it was like a good camp. And then I can go back to school and teach. Like when we learned about Black history, and like I could tell like my teachers like more information. Say that, Dakota. <laughs> so here again, audience, they become the voice of our ancestors in the classrooms. So I get excited, real easy. So Dakota, I'm gonna ask you a question that's not even on the screen. If there was a friend of yours that was thinking about joining the junior storytellers, but wasn't sure, what would you tell them briefly why they should sign up? Uh. I would tell them to join because it's a good program that they can learn from it and they also get paid. <laughs> that piece. Thank you, Dakota. By the way, Dakota's a budding basketball star as well. So everybody give Dakota some love. Thank you, Dakota. Okay. Good job, Dakota. See you next year. Ilhan, you ready? Ilhan is our next junior storyteller. Hello, my name is Ilhan Upshur and I'm in 10th grade. My poem is called Brilliance. In the field of STEM, we proudly stand. Black minds making their imprint hand in hand. From inventors, scientists, to mathematicians, we honor a STEM brilliance. Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, breaking through with all her advances in science, inspiring us with all she knew. Mary Jackson, Dr. April Erickson Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughan. All hidden figures, their contributions still lingering on. Dr. James Edward West, an adventure so wise, improving and advancing audio technology, reaching the skies. Together, we shape the world we see. Black excellence in STEM, our legacy. Together, we pave the way for tomorrow. Innovation and inspiration we borrow. Oh, oh. together, we shape the world we see. You better say that then, Johan. I'm so proud of you. Johan is also returning, right, Johan? Yes. And it's okay. Johan started out last year, and we had some challenges. I'm not sure what happened. You may have been in another country. I, I was having some like internet issues last year. Uh, yeah, I know, but. But you came back. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. Thank you so much. And so, Ilhan, since you returning, I'm going to ask the question, why did you come back? 
Uh, I came back because, like, last year I learned, like, a lot and, like, I was more knowledgeable and I just wanted to, like, learn more this year. Okay. So what was the difference this year for you personally? You're a year older. You were determined to come back. What was different this year than last year for, for Ilhan? Uh, this year I had, like, a lot more ideas and, like, thoughts I wanted to add in my poem and stuff. So, yeah. So you couldn't wait to come back then, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Can we give Ilhan some love, please? Great job, Ilhan. So are you going to come back next year? Yeah, I'm going to come back next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Great job, Ilhan. And see you next year. Okay. Now we have Kozar as our next junior storyteller. My name is Kozar Muhammad, and I'm a senior now and my piece is called Still We Rise. The dream we had every night, praying as we get beat, doing the dirty work for white folks, it's unacceptable. Because of our color, we became owned, beaten, and forced to work. Enough. We've had enough, and we were going to stand up. But through patience and time, finally it was over. Getting our lives together was the hardest part, but we're no longer slaves, we're no longer owned, working for a better life, for our kids and future life. Look at us, we did it, and they never expected us to get this far. We rose and will continue to rise and we will never stop. Thank you. Kozar, Kozar. So full transparency, before we came on, I believe it was Kozar that came on and I think um, she said, are people gonna see our videos? <laughs> And we said, yes. So Kozar, it's okay. It's okay, Kozar. Because you see why it's important people see your video. We've had enough. And so audience, what's important for my immigrant scholars, they're not part of the enslaved, but they have a story of oppression in their own countries. So is that, that there's that parallel struggle and journey of affirming oneself in spaces that doesn't want to affirm them. So, Kozar, you did it. You did, did it. it. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did. Look at that smile. So I got a question to ask you. Hmm. What section did you choose to tell your story through? I'm not sure, but I think it's like American Channel or something like that. Okay. Okay. It's all good. I got a lot out of that. So why was it important for you personally being an immigrant to tell because your story? Mm -hmm. In a way that poem said a lot because it was like, you know, obviously a lot of bad stuff happened that if you're an immigrant, you wouldn't really know because if you're outside of the country, you wouldn't really know the backstory of America. As when you come and then you learn the backstory, you're like, oh my God, no way that all of that happened. But then they got to realize, you know, all of that happened for a reason. On top of that, it's like, it showed like the life we live now because if all of those didn't happen back then, if our ancestors didn't fight for it, I don't think we would be living the same way we live right now. Thank oh. you so much. Thank you. And audience, what is it like for our immigrant students, scholars to come over here and be racialized in a country coming from a continent where race is not even a context, right? That's got to be a lot to hold. So great job. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Thank you very much. And please come back, please. Most definitely, I will. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have one junior storyteller who's not here today. We didn't get a chance to do a video either. We're supposed to do it live. But I feel like I'll share her poem just briefly, uh, just to acknowledge her work into the museum. That's JT, uh, who was not able to do a video or join us. So I'm just going to screen share her poem just to acknowledge the work she did with us. Um, her poem is called Beneath the Truth. Um, what's the truth? Yes, okay. Mr. D. Are you gonna read it? Yes, I am. Thank you. 
What's the truth? The truth is something you think they want to know, but deep down don't want to hear. The truth will always leave an echo in your ear and tears running through your eyes as my hands tremble from the whip you have hit me with. I still stay strong. I will not give up. No, you will not scare me. I stand with pride and justice because I know I will stand tall. You thought you could break me? Oh, you must be crazy. And that's all the pain and suffering you will hear from a past of chattel slavery. Oh, that was JT's work. Oh, JT, I'm hoping. Let's give JT some love in her absence. And audience, we work with JT personally in trying to get her and and i think either ilhan or akron talked about sometimes for whatever reason the internet just does not act right for us and so i'm glad that we got a chance to honor her work but i also learned that i believe jt was the youngest of all the junior storytellers she was in junior high school so for her to come on amongst all these um juniors and seniors and graduates said a lot about her intestinal fortitude or her desire to show up so jt thank you so much i appreciate you i'm hoping you come back next year okay thank you and Mr. D, jt is a nickname short for jt Anna. thank you miss noni for that because i'm sure that's important to jt um and Layla, i will go ahead and show you a piece my name is Layla. i'm in ninth grade and the name of my story is people's emotions Hi, I'm a liar. I lie in ways you've never heard before. I'll tell you white lies, real lies, dark lies, light lies. I'll tell you any lie you wanna hear. Sometimes I'll say it to your face and sometimes I'll be the whisper in your ear. And you won't even realize you're in my web of lies. I'll have you so conceited, so inside of yourself that you'll never realize I was in control the whole time. Hi. I'm truth. I'm the thing that the lie hides from you. I'm the thing that people are trying to figure out and have tried to figure out for centuries. Hi, I'm truth. See, the truth is everything except a lie. It's faith, it's hope, it's pain, but it's also something that cannot be contained. Much like history, there is truth and there are lies. In today's society, it's hard to define the truth from a lie. But as we dig deep, we find a piece of history dragging out the truth from the shadows of the dark. Hi, I'm dark. I'm the shadows of your heart. I'm the creepy crawly monster that you were scared of as a child. I'm the thing that caused you to hate the same people that bleed the same as you. I'm the thing that caused you to hurt, torment, and brand someone that's different from you. You'll see what I do to people in history books, but you have to look close enough. Hi, I'm fine. I'm fine because I live in the 21st century where everything's all right. I got electronics. I got everything I need. It's fine, right? But wait, something's missing. I feel like I'm in four walls and I'm constantly only going within what's been allowed for me. <laughs> Hi. I'm knowledge. I'm the thing that people have to search for. Searching and searching, finding and finding on a cycle so repetitive, it'll cause your head to spin. I know you may be thinking that I'm not an emotion. And that's true. But I need to tell you that because of me, you get, well, truth. Because of me, you have physicians like Emotep, and you have gas masks and blood banks. <laughs> Make sure to thank Charles and Garrett for that. You have so many people you refuse to acknowledge because of pride and ignorance. I'm the thing that wants to help you. I'll uncover the lenses of lies that people have tried to tell you. Hi, I'm the thing that people can't define. I'm the thing in the deepest part of your despair that'll make you feel just right. I'm that feeling you get when you see that through all the hurt and torment that people still got up and they rise. 
Some call me hope. Some call me faith. And some say it's the Lord's good grace. <laughs> so, hi. I'm a black girl. And I have a few things to say. I am not a game that can be played with. I am not an object or number that can be used to fill your racial quota. I'm a person, a person that's not taking no for an answer. I'm no longer enslaved or someone who is meant to cower. I am a black girl in America demanding the respect I deserve. And I stand here with the knowledge of my ancestors in my heart and in my soul to tell you that no matter what I go through, either way, I'm a rise. Uh, where are you on my screen? I'm right here. <laughs> Miss Washington. <laughs> Miss Washington. <laughs> so, Layla, how old are you? I'm 15. Folks, you hear what she just spit out of her mouth at 15? <laughs> I didn't see that at the beginning of the storytelling session. Okay, you're right. It's all over. You are a strong black woman and you not have just arrived, you've never left, okay? Make sure everybody knows that. So Layla, is this your first junior storytelling session? Yes, sir. Gotcha, thank you so much. So here's a question. What section or sections did you speak through in the museum? Um, I did the Jim Crow era. I did um, American uh, chattel slavery, and I also did Still We Rise. So here's a question. Why did you want to tell this story? Um, one of the main reasons was because I wanted to include people's emotions and people's way of going through whatever they, the way they decide things. Like, for example, lying. Right, mm -hmm. we think about lying and we have a memory of something like we know instinctively that we're not telling the truth, but we're still gonna lie because it's just the way that we think. We don't wanna get caught. We don't want something to happen. And sometimes we're not knowledgeable about the things and the consequences of that lying or the consequences of certain actions. And some of us call it feigning ignorance because we choose not to acknowledge um, what we're going through and so i really wanted to in this poem declare that i understand i understand the emotions i understand um through the history that you have given us and provided us with that it's it's not okay and i'm acknowledging that and i'm saying that even though we went through all of that i'm still going to rise and i'm still going to take that history and i'm going to move forward with it and create better things once again how do you <laughs> get ready world you better get ready i'm telling you okay it's seven o'clock and i want to be respecting people's time so we're gonna thank you can we give them all a hand please so please forgive us for going a little bit over miss noni had to move to another place so i want to give thank we're not you. late no till 7 30 mr d oh, we're thank right you. on time yes thank you, Ooh, thank you. Woo! So, I would love to open up the floor to the, uh, well, first of all, let me turn over to Miss Noni, because I need to breathe, because Layla, you done took me someplace. Lord have mercy. I got oh, fabulous job, junior storyteller. So wonderful. We want to thank, I think uh, we, we want to, uh, Mr. G thanked earlier, but let's thank uh, Joelle. Thank you. Joelle, you want to wave? Joelle has been a support team member, working with the young people, um, helping them with the video, helping to pull the edits together. Just so very grateful. And Christelle, you wave. Christelle, who's been facilitating this evening, also working with the junior storytellers, and really grateful for them both. Mr. D is probably going to shoot right up through the ceiling because he just gets, can't contain himself. 
we want to open up to normally we would ask the junior storytellers how you feel now that you've shared your piece but i know we really want to hear let the the audience ask questions and share what they thought of the pieces so raise your hand your physical hand or your electronic hand and we will just open up the space does that sound good and i don't you can hear this noise behind me so i apologize So you got it? Yeah, I got it. Go ahead, Amy. We see you. Well, first of all, I just want to say how impressed I am at every word that every one of these scholars shared. Um, every year it seems to get better and better, and this is the best year. Um, so the question I had, and it could it could also be for Christelle and Joelle, but what was the most um surprising thing you learned about yourself by participating in this project? So Amy, could you ask it directly to either Chris Dale or Joelle, please? Wait, yeah. that was the question for everybody. That for was the a question for everyone. Yes, yeah. and open to Chris Dale or Joelle to answer. Yes. Yeah, in, uh, for all of the storytellers, including, oh, and also, because I, I imagine by going through this process again this year, Christelle and Joelle also learned something surprising. So um, I'm, I'm just curious, what did everybody learn by going through this process? Because, man, there, there was a lot of knowledge being shared. I can go. Um, I think just being on witnessing the greatness of every single junior storyteller that comes, I'm not surprised of her greatness that they come with, but also seeing that the museum lands differently with every single person that sees it. Um, and you take away something differently as well each time you see it, because we have some returning junior storytellers. Um, and the stories have been different this year compared to last year. Um, and then just being on the supporting team of the young people, I'm just amazed and also grateful to see that these people will be our future generation, right? The leaders that are coming out. Um, and yeah, I'm grateful that I chose this program. and I'm grateful to have learned from them. Thank you. Christelle, do you mind just calling on people to go through since you know um, who all the storytellers are and I might call on a parent or somebody? No worries. Um, let's see. Maya, do you want to answer Amy's question? And also no is a full sentence as Mr. D says it. Um, I would kind of kind of agree what you were saying again, and I really want to emphasize just having the safe space and being being able to be around people my age who also I feel like can relate to what I'm going through and what I believe is just really valuable. Thank you, Maya. Maybe we can get two more people to answer Amy's question, then we can open the floor to someone else who has a question. Do we have any volunteers or I can call in somebody? Okay, go ahead. Um, one of the things that I learned about myself would have to be how interested I was in like this research. Um, not saying that I wasn't before, but I found myself more invested when learning about not just slavery, but also different parts of American history and how there were inventors and people um, that actually influenced the way of living. And to me, that was amazing to find out and to hear about. So I have to thank Mr. D for that. Thank you. Do I have one more junior storyteller volunteer or Joelle? Do we have any more junior storytellers that wanna share? 
because it's your night yes gabriella wonderful um for me just like seeing everybody's creativity and like knowledge it like it inspired me because like um uh, it like helped me to realize like i have that in me too and like i have the ability to like uh share my story and like um just like learn from other people and also teach other people too Thank you guys, amazing. Amy, do you have any more thoughts that you wanna to add to your question? Uh, no, I'm just so impressed and proud of all these kids. And um, so thank you all for sharing. I, I really appreciate it. So let's let somebody else ask a question. Thank you, we have Mia. Go ahead. Is that Mia from last year or am I? Yes, you're right. This can I us. see you? Hi. We don't, we, you know, we're not camera ready. <laughs> okay, okay. That's okay, mom. Real quick. Mom. Real quick. Okay, hold on, hold on. Can you see? Okay. Hi, guys. Hey, y'all. <laughs> nice seeing you guys. <laughs> good to see y'all, too. Um, so, of course, uh, we're just glad to be here and experiencing this with you guys this year. Um, so the growth is absolutely amazing. Just, um, I mean, oh my gosh. Yes. And so a, a friend of ours is here as well. And so he was able to, you know, listen in and, and, and he had a few words that he wanted to say. Go ahead, oh, Mo. No, I, I just wanted to congratulate you, really. This is okay. so inspiring. And, can can um, you hear him? It was very inspiring. And at the same time, I think uh, oh, yeah. I learned a lot. I really, really learned a lot. And I'm not African. I, I was really sucked into it for the first time in many years. <laughs> so my congratulations to all of you, because I think you're doing excellent. Yeah, and he 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 said he also, I'm speaking kind of for him, but while he was watching, he was like, oh my gosh, how can I get involved in this was his, was his words. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you... Um, Okay, I'm just gonna take it off with video because I look crazy. But anyway, um, so yeah, we man, keep doing what you're doing, and we've got to figure out how to stay plugged in with you guys. So we'll figure that part out. <laughs> so can I hear Amia's voice, please? Hi. Thank you, Amia. What's your mom's name? Today, <laughs> Frazier. I'm sorry, I'll take it off video. Tanae, Tanae Frazier. <laughs> Thank you so much. So just for transparency, Amia's mom was the first parent to go through the junior storytelling program in addition alongside of her amazing daughter. And she also told a story that's recorded on the SPL uh, website. So thank you all for joining. When I saw Amia, I said, that can't be who I think it is. So thank you so much. And mom, will you please text me, please? Definitely. I, I definitely want that, I want to help that young man get connected to the to the program. Okay. Okay. Thank yep. You. Most definitely. When are they uh, coming through? <laughs> oh, question. So when uh because I know it's a traveling museum. So any plans on coming to the Dallas area? Just as soon as y'all invite me. Okay. Okay. We're we'll working out. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Nice seeing you, Mia. Um, anyone else have any questions for the junior storyteller or Mr. D about the process? This is your space or any feedback or anything you're feeling after hearing the amazingness of our junior storytellers. Well, I would like to Nakaya Isabel. Are you there? I saw you come on screen for a second. Yes, I am here. Well, hello there. Hi, everyone. I am excited to be here. I uh, was Layla's teacher this year at Why Not You Academy. I'm super excited to just see and hear everybody's boldness, unapologetic words and storytelling ability. And I personally know Layla, so just to see her blossom in this arena, I remember seeing the ad and I shared it with her and I'm so, so, so proud that she decided to jump in. Like, 
I'm like, man, you all are teachers, you're educators. And I think one of the, I think it was Dakota said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to teach my teachers. And I think absolutely, please feel free to be bold in your schools and your classrooms as you embark on a new year. And as a teacher, I'm here learning from you. So thank you so much for standing in your power and for the leadership that put this on. It was amazing. I'm excited to hear more and go research and hear some of the other events. So thank you all for sharing today. You're welcome. I'm gonna put my cell phone number in direct. So I would love to collaborate with you, okay? How does it feel to hear your teacher share this about you and your growth? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely happy she came. Um, and I'm also like, I'm glad that she sees the growth and I feel that I've grown in the program too. So I'm glad that she agrees. Great, amazing. Okay, anyone else wants to step up and share any thoughts, questions? Yeah, I'll go ahead and just say how proud I am of everybody. Um, Oh, I think somebody else is trying to speak. You're unmuted. Yeah, Jonathan. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You're unmuted. It is unmuted. You want to share something? Oh, can everyone hear? I can't hear. Yes, yeah. yes we can hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I just wanted to say um, how very, very, very proud, um, if I can dare put myself in that place, of the whole thing. Brother Delbert, um, him and my wife, they go back further than me, but him and I, um, we, been, we go back a little way, belong to this um, group called Meta Metal Passage, and um, I just want to say how important what you all are talking about as we're looking around the country um, as the most of the public educational systems are trying to blot this out of history. They're debating on whether this should even be taught. So the importance of this <clears throat> that we're talking about is extraordinary. Um, we don't want to go through uh, <laughs> the the cyclical nature of, of time and go through this again um, and then blot it out like it's never happened. Um, so that's a um, real value what you all are doing. Um, Brother um, Delbert, I call him Baba Delbert, but it, it, the, I'm so very moved and proud and these young people, thank you all for even taking the time Thank you so much. You could be doing so much more anywhere else, doing doing anything you want to do, and you chose to do this. We love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Jonathan. And Brother Jonathan and I have a lot of deep conversation around this subject matter. So it's really comforting and reassuring to hear the young people speaking their truth to what's going on in America. Actually, not just America, but globally today. So thank you, Brother Jonathan. Thank you. Joel, you were sh about to share something. I'll, I'll wait until we kind of close out and then uh, say my piece and then, you know, pass it on to Mr. D. Okay. So, so I, got a, I got a question for Bo, are you there? I am. Hi. Hi there. How, Bo, how'd you find out about the program? You told me about it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bo, share with us what was your experience like watching these amazing uh, young adults? Oh, my God. It, it fills my heart so much. It There's just something that's so deep and... Um, ancestral that I felt and, and, and that, that came up in so many of your poems too. And um, I could, yeah, it just, 
it really touches me to be here. And I found myself wondering how, if I wanted to hold back just, just for other people to speak, but I did have a curiosity about how the ancestors moved through you all and if there are stories from the ancestors in particular that anyone wants to, to feel motivated to share. How the ancestors move through you all. That those that was a question for the junior storytellers. So Bo is asking every one of you, if anyone wants to volunteer, how did the ancestors move through you as you were writing and sharing your piece? Let's see if we can get somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Do we have any volunteers or should I invite somebody in the space to share? Ikron, I see you smiling. Um, yeah, honestly, that's a really good question because when I was writing my piece, um, I actually previously asked my mom about stories of like grandma who lived in Malia. Um, I never got to see her. She's my mom's mother. Um, and hearing stories about her, she's she's like a, such a powerful woman, has a lot of pride in being Somali, being East African. Um, and so whenever you kind of feel like you're that other in school or even when you go to places, um, sometimes I would think of that and I'd be like, you know, I, I should be prideful of who I am and where I come from uh, because it's such it's it's so beautiful being who I am from where I come from. So I thought that was a really nice question. Thank you, Akra. Thank you, well said. Maybe one more junior storyteller. Dakota, I see you looking away. Can I invite you into a space to share? Uh, I don't really know how to answer the question. I'm not going to be honest. Thank you. Thank you for honest, honesty. Okay. Well, I think, uh, Bo, do you have any other comment or any thoughts you want to share? So can I ask Bo a question? Sure. Bo, how do you identify ethnically? Uh, ethnically, I'm Han Chinese. Han Chinese. So mm -hmm. the reason why I asked Bo that question, because when junior storytellers, when I talk about the first section, Mother Africa, is rooted through an Afrocentric lens. But when I go into schools, I ask individuals how they identify ethnically. So in both cases, I would say replace Mother Africa with China. Because there's a couple of things that we have a connection to rich heritage, rich tradition, and rich culture. We also share a shared oppression at the hands of whiteness in America. So it's not just about black and white, and someone talked about this, the othering that's so critically important in terms of the American history story. So thank you so much, Bo, for asking that rich question. Thank you so much. It's so good to feel the life here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joel, you ready to share your piece? Uh, we could open it up just for any last minute thoughts. You know, I see Dr. Donald Felder on the on the call. You know, I don't know if um, any junior storytellers have the urge just to share what comes up naturally. Um, but I'll give it another 10 seconds or so, then kind of close out with what I have to say. Pass it to you all to close it out. So one of my mentors, if I can, since someone speak, no one's speaking, one of my mentors, Bill Costin, is on the screen. And Bill, are you available to share anything? An hour ago, I had no idea what I was coming to see. 
I am totally blown away. All you young people are our future. This was one of the greatest presentations I've ever seen. I've been collecting black history for over 50 years. And just, just to see the interest and in hearing all the stories, I'm blown away. So just keep doing what you're doing, sharing what you're sharing, and, and God bless all of you. Thank you, Bill. And Bill, what time is it where you are and where are you coming in from? I'm in Connecticut. It's 1023. So you see, junior storytellers, he's past his bedtime for you. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill, so much for showing up. I appreciate it. Okay, yeah, and I just wanted to say congratulations to everybody. Super proud of you all. Um, you know, like we said at the beginning, all of the work is already done because it's within you and it's just about bringing that out and being willing to share that. And I hope that this experience is one where you all are, where you feel validated, where you feel like, you know, you can find your voice and that when you have something to say, people are not only going to listen, but it's going to strike them in a way that we can't even foresee before we share. So just wanted to say, you know, you know, all of you all are so wonderful. You're brilliant, you know, using language that I wasn't using when I was in, you know, ninth grade, you know, to 12th grade. I'm like, oh, OK, what, what does Webster have to say about this? Got to look stuff up, you know, just really proud of the way that you all show up, know that you all have such a great skill set and and to continue to use your voice, um, because when you find it, oftentimes people will try to silence it even more. And so it's just about knowing that what you have to say will impact others um, and you all are the future. And it's really nice to know that, um, you know, there's hope because, you know, I can get a little angry. I can get a little cynical at times, you know, but then when I see you all, you know, it lets me know, I'm like, okay, there, there, there's, there's some hope. We, we still got some fight in us, um, you know, but not only some fight, but tact and brilliance. Um, because if you just go out swinging a sword, you know, um, it may not end, <laughs> end in the way that we like. So way to go, you guys. All of you all, way to go, you all, ladies as well, and just uh, super happy. Way to go. Thank you. So it's 7.25, and we lost Noni because I know she was in transition. So I don't want to go past the time that we had uh, agreed to. But let me just say this to the junior storytellers. First of all, let me say this to the audience. Thank you so much for showing up for our future. Thank you so much in believing in them in a way that now when they sign off, they'll know that you've got their back, okay? Junior storytellers, I'm gonna talk to you directly. I'm not surprised. I knew you had it in you. Now the question is, how do you change the world based on your voice. Yes, change the world because you can. And never, ever, ever apologize for your blackness and your brilliance. Never apologize because we all stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Thank you both for the reminder. We have a responsibility. They're holding us. So at the end of the day, are they going to say, thank you, thank you, thank you? Or are they going to say, guess what? Although you may be scared, but, but the definition of courage is being afraid and doing it anyway. So y'all all have Mr. D's cell phone number. Do not be a secret. Please reach out. And I'm always going to be here for you so you're not alone. So is there anyone of you junior storytellers that want to say something in closing? And we did this, uh, audience, junior storytellers, as a result of this journey to where you started and now you're at the end, I want to have one word 
from you to express how you're feeling right now. And Maya, you know you're special. Give us one word. Fulfilled. So call on one of your uh, junior storytelling um, teammates. Um, Gabriella. Um, satisfied. Call and we're going to invite somebody else to share a word, please. Um, Ilhan. Um, knowledgeable. And Ikran. Prideful. Um, Dakota. Uh, grateful. And wasn't gone yet. No, uh, Kozar. Um, it feels amazing. Great. We have one minute left. Joel. Excited. Christelle. Took my word. Um, emotional. Hmm. And I'm going to say. I'm amazed. Okay. Thank you all for taking the time today. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all next year, same time, same channel with a different story. Thank you all.